Choosing a rifle for your first African safari might seem like a daunting task, but in reality, it's actually pretty easy. As a matter of fact, you probably have that perfect planes game rifle sitting in your safe right now. There are basically two types of rifles for hunting Africa. A planes game rifle and a dangerous game rifle. You know, sure, there's some crossover calibers that can uh, do both to some extent, especially calibers like the 375 h and H. But uh, most hunters want a flatter shooting, low recoil rifle for planes game and a hard hitting big bore for dangerous game. It's because of this that I'll discuss both rifles pretty much separately in this video. So bear with me. Also, why limit yourself to one rifle on your trip to Africa? You're allowed to take two rifles per person and a double rifle case is, you know, no more difficult to transport than a single rifle case is. So there's absolutely no reason not to take two rifles to Africa. If nothing else, you'll have a backup rifle if something breaks on you. This video is simply recommendations based off of my own experience, experiences of fellow hunters, and advice given by PHs in Africa. I might use the word PH a lot in this video. PH is short for professional hunter. When in Africa, your PH or professional hunter will not only be your hunting guide, but he'll also be your tour guide, your camp host, your organizer, your medic, your translator, your trophy care expert, your bartender, your travel agent, your friend, and cashier all packaged into one individual. African PHs actually do a lot. You know, and they're qualified to do it too. Unlike guides in most countries, African PHs have to go to school and pass exams in order to be PHs. These guys basically have a PhD in hunting. You know, put your ego aside and always listen to your PH. You know, hunting Africa is something that every serious hunter should do at least once in their lifetime. And once you do it once and you get back, I guarantee you the first thing you're going to do is plan your next trip to Africa. Hopefully, this video and the contents of this video help you in selecting your first African rifle. When selecting your perfect planes game rifle, remember that caliber and bullet selection are a lot more important than the brand of rifle or the type of rifle. You should take a caliber that's large enough to easily kill an 800 pound zebra or a 600 pound kudu from angles that require good penetration. You know, African plains game animals are tougher to kill than an American deer. You know, most of them are about as tough as an elk. The 270 Winchester is usually considered the minimum for plains game hunting in Africa. But personally, Moving up to the 30 calibers or 7mm Magnum is a much better choice. Basically, any caliber that's good for elk will be good for plains game in Africa. The classic plains game rifle in Africa and the one that is most recommended is probably the 30-06. It has a good trajectory for shots past 300 yards. It hits hard, recoil really isn't that bad at all, and emergency ammunition can be purchased anywhere in the world, and I mean anywhere. The 308 is also a fantastic round, you know, for basically all the same reasons that the 30 6 is, but uh, there is some differences. So what's the difference between the 30-06 and the 308? Well, the 30-06 is a much better cartridge if you load your own ammunition. You can load to higher speeds, work with much heavier bullets, and you know have a lot of latitude with seating depth. If you don't reload and plan on buying your ammo from the store, there's only a slight advantage to the 30-06. So if you load your own ammo, get the 30-06. If you buy your ammo from the store, the 308 is perfectly acceptable. You know, both are good calibers for Africa. 
The 300 magnums are also very popular in Africa, and for good reason. They produce great results. If you show up to any hunting camp with your 300 magnum and you put your first practice shot on the mark, you will have a very happy pH. Most African pHs claim that many of their clients' most dramatic kills happen with the 300 magnums. The popular 300 magnums in Africa are the 300 Winchester Magnum, the 300 Winchester Short Magnum, and the venerable 300 H&H &H Magnum. In fact, the 300 H&H &H is one of my favorite calibers of all time. You know, it really doesn't matter which one you choose because anything that can throw a 180 grain projectile out of a muzzle at over 3,000 feet per second is going to kill good and out to a good distance too. The 7 millimeter Magnum is also a fine planes game cartridge. You know, but it isn't as popular in Africa as the 30 calibers though. The reason for this is that African hunters and pHs think differently than American hunters. African hunters like big heavy bullets that penetrate deep, you know, and they tend to think that light bullets traveling at high speeds are highly overrated. You know, pretty much in Africa, Roy Weatherby's theories go right out the window. And you know, there's some truth to their line of thinking when it comes to hunting in Africa. You know, African animals have different anatomy than American animals. The vitals, of African animals are further forward than animals such as deer and elk. You know, deer hunters in America go for that classic behind the shoulder heart lung shot, but uh, that won't work in Africa. You'll end up gut shooting the animals. You know, the vitals of African animals tend to be right between the shoulders. So you need a caliber that can smash through both shoulders. You know, this is why premium bullets and heavier weights are preferred by African pHs. But there are times in Africa where a good flat shooting high velocity caliber is definitely an asset. You know, places like the East Cape of South Africa or the deserts of Namibia, the open terrain makes the need for longer shots a reality. In these environments, the magnums will have a definite advantage over calibers like the 308. So when choosing a caliber, location will also play an important role. Although controlled round feed rifles aren't necessary for planes game hunting, they are a superior design for a hunting rifle. Controlled round feed, especially with a uh, full length Mauser style clock extractor, is just a more reliable design for what we do. You don't have to worry about broken extractors, stuck ejector plungers, double feeds, stuck cases and dirty chambers, you know. Although it's not necessary for your planes game hunt, control round feed is a better design for a hunting rifle. You also need to be comfortable with the rifle you shoot. You know, you won't be taking your favorite 223 or 243 to Africa with you. I mean, come on. You know, American men are probably the most pussified men in the world when it comes to recoil. I mean, you know, they act like you're getting a freaking tetanus shot, you know, when you shoot a .30-06. You know, in reality, a thirty caliber rifle doesn't have that much recoil at all. I mean, that's, uh, that's ridiculous. You know, I, I hate to say this, but, you know, we need to man up. The problem is that you shoot off the bench too much at the range. Recoil feels 10 times worse when you shoot off a bench. You know, you won't be shooting off a bench while you're hunting in Africa. So buy a good set of shooting sticks and practice off of those and practice standing too. 80% of your shots in Africa are going to be off the sticks, you know, but luckily felt recoil is very mild when you're shooting off of shooting sticks or standing or kneeling. You know, the fear of recoil is often worse than recoil itself. And uh, when you do shoot off the bench because you need to zero your rifle or you need to do some load development, you know, just use a, a past pad. You know, 
these work great for long sessions on the bench and will really help a newbie avoid the fear of recoil. Because remember, it's not, the, it's not the actual recoil that gets you, it's the fear of the recoil. And this will alleviate both of those, you know, and uh, even if you're standing and shooting, practicing off the sticks, practicing offhand, well, you know, with heavy recoilers like a dangerous game rifle, you know, these, this past pad comes in real handy. And personally, I really like the Magnum models, so I highly recommend these. Also, a rifle with a three position safety. is a huge benefit in Africa. Actually, a three position safety is superior for probably any situation. The three position safety on most of these rifles, rather than like the Remington 700 where it just blocks the trigger, this actually blocks the trigger, blocks the bolt, blocks the firing pin. So this is a fantastic design. The best you can get. In areas like Limpopo, in most of Zimbabwe and Zambia, you'll be trudging through very thick brush. The three position safety will prevent your bolt from accidentally opening when it inevitably gets snagged on branches. You'll also constantly be loading and unloading your rifle, getting in and out of the truck all day. And you'll probably live with your rifle during your entire hunting safari. You know, sometimes your, your rifle will literally be leaning against your bed while you sleep. That's a lot of firearm handling. so. You know, the three position safety makes all that handling much safer, in my opinion. And lastly, let's discuss optics for your planes game rifle. A good, rugged, variable power scope should be standard on your planes game rifle. An objective between 40 and 50 millimeters is perfect for planes game hunting. Most of your shots in Africa are going to be between 50 and 250 yards, you know, with the average being probably about 100 yards. The most important thing is to make sure that the low setting on your scope is low enough. When you're walking around hunting in the bush, your scope's going to be set on its lowest setting. This is because targets will often pop up instantly at close range and you'll have a very small window of opportunity to shoot. You know, you, you'll need to instantly shoulder the rifle, find the animal in the scope, take the safety off, aim and fire. You will not have time to monkey around with your magnification adjustment. Nothing frustrates a pH more than a client who can't get on target and take a fast shot. In order to get a quick shot off at shorter distances, you need to set your scope at a minimum of three or four power. You know, any more than that, and you will not find the animal in the scope fast enough, or you're gonna have focus or parallax issues. If the target's farther away, you know, you have a lot more time. You could set up the sticks, find the animal, you know, in a adjust magnification for a more precise shot. But uh, when you're walking around in the bush, set it on its lowest setting. The beauty of many of the newer scope designs is that they give you both high and low magnification in the same scope. You know, Leupold's 3 by 18 scopes are the perfect example of a scope that has low enough magnification to hunt in the bush, yet a high enough magnification for long shots or for load development from the bench. And most important is scope quality. Don't buy a cheap Tasco or Simmons scope for your safari. You know, you just traveled 10,000 miles to Africa to conduct the hunt of your dreams. You know, there, there's no Bass Pro Shops or Sportsman Warehouses on the Zambezi Delta for you to buy a replacement scope when your Tasco falls apart. So, you know, 
You don't want to be stuck in the middle of the Kalahari for 10 days with no scope. It's better to buy a cheaper rifle than it is to buy a cheaper scope. It's that important. So never go cheap on scopes for your Africa safari. You know, the, this seems to be the hardest aspect of a safari for an American hunter to grasp. You know, we, we tend to settle for cheap, low-quality shit and uh, tend to completely avoid good advice from other people. So please take mine and get a decent scope. Okay, now that you understand what calibers and rifles to bring to Africa, let's discuss bullets. Since you'll be taking shoulder shots on large animals, you need a bullet that holds together almost 100% and penetrates deep after hitting tough muscle and bone. The most highly recommended bullets for this are uh, bullets like the Nosler Partition or the Swift A-Frame. You know, monolithic bullets like the Barnes, you know, or even uh, Acubons, Woodlays, you know, or even the Trophy Bonded Bear Claw. You basically want to stick with monolithic expanding bullets, you know, like the Barnes or the GMX. Or uh, a really good bonded bullet, like the Partition or the Swift A-Frame. You know, if, if longer distance shots are on the menu, you might want to look at something like the Bond, you know, the Barnes LRX or the AccuBond. But whatever you do, please leave your bullets like VLDs and Sierra Game Kings at home. These are basically target bullets rebranded as hunting bullets. These bullets are fantastic for soft tissue hits at long distance, but that's not what Africa hunting is all about. As a matter of fact, on my last trip to Africa, a guy was using these on planes game out of his 7mm mag, and he had to pay for several animals that uh, were lost and never recovered. So... I don't recommend bullets like this for hunting Africa. Stay with a good monolithic bullet or a good bonded core bullet. Most serious hunters reload their own ammunition. They know the quality and they know exactly how it will perform. But some hunters prefer to use factory ammunition. Fortunately, some of today's factory ammo is better than it's ever been. You know, a lot of it's loaded with premium components to exacting tolerances. You know, will it be as good as my reloads? Definitely not, but factory ammo can be very close. There are two brands of factory ammo for hunting that really stand out to me. I find the uh, quality and components to be top-notch, and they shoot very well in a wide variety of guns. These are uh, Nosler's Trophy Grade Ammunition, and... Uh, the Barnes Vortex ammunition. Both of these factory ammo offerings will serve you very well in Africa. I highly recommend them if you don't load your own ammunition. First of all, let me state that a big board double rifle is absolutely not necessary or even optimal for a dangerous game hunt. They're very expensive, they lack optics capability, they're less accurate, and usually recoil more. You know, some PHs carry them for backup, and double rifles are actually extremely fantastic in the role of a backup rifle. You know, but if you want to use one for nostalgia reasons on your hunt, go for it. But, you know, double rifles won't be covered here, and, you know, they're, they're probably not the best choice for a beginner anyway. And that leaves us with bolt action big bores. Stay with the controlled round feed rifle with a full length Mauser style extractor. You know, you, you could pay for a very expensive custom rifle, or you can buy a rifle like the Winchester Model 70 Safari, the CZ 550, the Kimber Caprivi, a rifle from the Montana Rifle Company, or, you know, get yourself a Ruger Hawkeye African. 
375 is the minimum legal caliber for dangerous game in most countries and has probably been responsible for more kills than any other caliber. You know, it's perfect for crocs, brain shots on water-based hippos, big cats, and even buffalo. But some PHs consider 375 to be a bit, how should I put this, uh, marginal for animals like buffalo, elephant, you know, and land-based hippos. But for these situations, stepping up to a 40 caliber or greater is probably better medicine. You know, often an animal really won't react to being hit, well, won't react drastically to being hit from a 375, you know, even if it eventually falls down and dies. Sometimes it's hard to even tell if you hit it well or not. But uh, when you hit it with a, you know, 40 caliber or greater bullet, you know right away. I mean, it knows it's hit, and you know you hit it. It's a noticeable difference. You know, dangerous game rifles, you know, the big bores, are definitely the point where recoil becomes a big factor in how manageable the gun is. You know, stepping up from a 375 to a 458 or something, you know, that's that's a drastic increase in felt recoil, you know, but in my opinion, the 416s, you know, kind of fall somewhat in between are in our, you know, they're pretty great compromise between recoil and power. You know, the 416s will take down anything. You know, but uh, in reality, you can load these things to be just as flat shooting as a 375, you know, but, but it'll hit harder than the 375. So, you know, if you can handle the recoil, really take a hard look at the 416s. And before I move off the subject of rifles, I need to correct a mistake. I told you earlier in the video that nothing frustrates a PH more than a client who can't get a shot off fast enough. Well, that isn't true. In reality, nothing frustrates a PH more than a client who uses a muzzle brake. You will not be hunting alone in Africa. You'll have a PH, a tracker or two, you know, and maybe even a ranger or government observer on the hunt. Everyone will be near you and communicating with each other right up to the point where you you pull that trigger. You know, uh, your hunting crew won't have hearing protection, you know, because they need to whisper to each other and to you, you know, about what animal to shoot and when to take your shot. You know, and they, they can't afford a set of $500 electronic game ears. You know, they... They may even need to keep communicating with you while they stay on the binoculars so they can track your animal after, you know, if it runs after the shot. So please, out of respect for your hunting crew, don't use a muzzle brake. And the bigger the caliber, the more loud and dangerous the noise and concussion will be to those around you. So please don't use them. Before I talk about slings, I want to talk about carry methods in Africa. I know you haven't gone on your first African safari yet, but you've been uh, watching a lot of the cable TV shows and everybody's walking around like this all over the bush thinking they're cool. I'm just here to tell you this is stupid. It really is. It makes absolutely no sense. You know, it's just as quick to get your rifle on your shoulder and get a shot off using your sling than doing this. I mean, come on, it's the same speed. The sling might even be faster. You know, th this really serves no purpose. It harkens back to a day when uh, there was actual rifle porters that, you know, carried rifles for these rich white hunters that would go to Africa, you know, and they carried it like this and the hunter walked behind him and when he wanted to take a shot, he grabbed the rifle and shoot it. I mean, it, you know, basically he was a rifle chauffeur, but, you know, even to this day, you know, you even see some professional hunters walking around like this. You know, there's really absolutely no need for it. And it's extremely dangerous. I mean, you're breaking firearm rules like crazy. I mean, even you watch TV, you watch guys like Ivan Carter. You know, and I, I cringe when I watch that damn show, even though I love the guy and I like his show. You know, he's just walking around muzzling everybody as he talks to him. You know, muzzling his trackers, muzzling his clients. You know, just, you know, and the, the guy's got... 
you know, two hot loads in the tube, you know, just pointing a gun at people's face. <laughs> and, you know, what, what really makes me laugh is, you know, when I watch some of these guys, you know, particularly like the best of the West types, you know, they, they go to Africa and they're on their planes game hunt, you know, with walking around all over the bush like this thinking they're cool. And then you see the same damn guys with the same damn rifle walking around Montana and New Mexico and they have the rifle on a sling, you know, like, like somehow magically the same damn rifle doesn't carry right in Africa with a sling, but, you know, but it does here. That's stupid. You know, get, get a good two-point sling, either leather or nylon, and use it. Don't complicate things, you know, and, and keep it safe. You'll need some way to carry spare ammo while you're in the field in Africa. Why do you need to carry spare ammo? Well, first of all, in Africa, you don't just shoot an animal and then sit back and admire your work. You keep pumping lead into it until it dies. You know, and that's, that uses a lot of ammo sometimes. This style of hunting is often hard for Americans to grasp, but that's how they do it in Africa. Also, you won't just be hunting one species of animal on your hunt. You may get lucky and take, you know, up to four trophies in one day. This also might require some spare ammo. You have five basic options when it comes to carrying spare ammo. You have the open butt belt carrier, the ammo pouch, the buttstock carrier, a culling belt, and, you know, your pocket. First of all, avoid carrying ammo in your pocket because you don't need live rounds rattling around in your pocket as you stalk through the bush. Just because Capstick did it, doesn't make it a good idea. That brings us to the belt pouch. You either love or you hate the belt pouch. There's really no in between on it. A good belt pouch is secure and low profile. Just make sure you get a pouch that has individual loops for each round. That way they don't rattle while you're walking around. The drawback to the belt pouch is that accessing your spare ammo is time consuming and kind of a pain in the ass. You Definitely don't want a belt pouch for hunting dangerous game because it just takes too long to access your spare ammo. Next is the buttstock mounted ammo carrier. Again, with these, you either love them or you hate them. My wife loves them, I hate them. Ammo tends to fall out of these a lot easier than with a belt-mounted carrier. You know, they, they add a little bit of bulk to the rear of your rifle, which I don't like. You know, but on another note, they can also either improve or degrade your cheek weld, depending on your scope height. My biggest gripe with this type of carrier is that sometimes the rounds snag on clothing while I'm carrying the rifle on a sling. And I don't really like that. You know, a lot of people don't seem to have a problem with it, including my wife, but I kind of do. And finally, we have the open belt ammo carrier. These are the most low profile carrier. The ammo is also accessed very fast and easy without the need for fine motor skills, you know, opening up snatch, snaps or latches or Velcro to try to get your spare ammunition out. You know, you, you can even grab rounds out of these without looking if you want to. You know, uh, I wouldn't use these for pig hunting in California where I might drive into town for lunch during the heat of the day, but, uh, you know, for hunting out in the middle of the bush in Africa, these are about as perfect of an ammunition carrier as you can get. 
I highly recommend this style of carrier for your Plains Game Safari. For dangerous game, of course, you know, it'd be wise to move up to a de dedicated uh, dangerous game belt or, you know, they, they like to call these culling belts. You know, these are a much better option for dangerous game cartridges. Now, I, I highly recommend the Murray brand for Murray Custom Leather. Africa is a fantastic place full of amazing people. You'll see and hear things that are, you are totally unaccustomed to and experience cultures that are very foreign to our own. So please leave your ego, preconceived notions, and your judgmental attitudes at home. Africa is Africa and you can't change that. The bottom line is you should always be courteous to locals, respect their wildlife, and always listen to what your, PA, what your professional hunter tells you. In retrospect, picking a rifle for your African hunting safari is probably the easiest part of planning for your trip. Make sure all your paperwork is completely squared away, both for your destination and for your home country. And make sure you've thoroughly researched airline and country policies on firearms and ammunition. And lastly, make sure you practice a lot with your rifle before heading out to Africa, especially from field positions like shooting off the stick, from standing, kneeling, even prone. Also, try to get in shape. Make sure you maintain some good, good physical conditioning before you head off to Africa. And as always, thanks for watching my video and good hunting.